else threatens to do to someone else what we do to each other. We try to talk you out of it. We try to tell you that there's something wrong with you talking like that. You telling them that you making it uncomfortable. So that means it's going to be uncomfortable for them too. They try to tell you what not to do, what they'll do to you in two seconds. Let me say it again. They will tell you not to do what they will do to you in two seconds. We live in a world where there are no boundaries anymore, where people think that they can do whatever they want to do and that there are no repercussions. Unfortunately, that's not the case. We find ourselves tonight, brothers and sisters, in a situation where I'm not going to hold you long. But I'll, I have to be fair. I really do. I give all praise to the Most High. If you tuned in to this, then you're here because of your own doing. I didn't tell you to be here. I just told you I had an announcement to make, and you tuned in for your own reasons. I think it's sad that amongst my own people, I don't know who to trust anymore. One of the things that this journey has taught me is that your enemy looks just like you and that there are so, some people who are so entrenched in the feelings that have grown in the soil of post-traumatic slave disorder that you still act like we are on the plantation even though we ain't picked cotton in over a hundred and some odd years. Some of y'all still looking for a pat on the head from the master. Some of y'all still want to be accepted as the go-along, the get-along person. And some of y'all, believe it or not, just don't want no trouble, just want things to stay the way they are. But most sadly enough, some of you all hate us so much. You hate your own kind so much that anyone who proposes any type of forward in progress for your people, you're the first one to say, well, if it ain't them, it's going to happen to somebody else. Some of y'all say the dumbest shit because you don't see that you're still in a slave master's mindset. You're still a slave, the plantation of the mind. That's where you are. You're shackled in your mind. You are still picking cotton in your mind. You're still buck dancing in your mind. You still put up with blackface in your mind in your mind you still afraid of the master coming to get you in the middle of the night in your mind and somebody comes along that exhibits intelligence and somebody comes along that tries to make some sense out of all this craziness when somebody comes along that tries to answer the questions that the children are asking. When someone comes along and tells the old folks that you ain't crazy, it ain't over yet. You just hung around to the fourth quarter, but you still here. When somebody comes along that says, snap out of it and let's get to the business. A lot of y'all are so entrenched in your emotions. You don't know how to snap out of it. You've been snapped in so long, you don't even know how to snap out. No matter how hard you try to snap out of it, you can't. And if you want to know what it looks like when you snap out of it, this is what it looks like. Because I snapped out of it. I woke up from being a clown that I used to be to being the man that I am right now. And some of y'all can't deal with that. Well, I need it to be contagious tonight. I need a lot of men to snap out of it and be the man that you really are, not the one that you're trying to be safe to be. And not waiting for somebody else to come along and do what you are fully capable of doing. I'm not going to ask why. In the first place, was a child allowed to leave the house of the parent that he had just moved in with to go with some white folks. Oh, the father said he didn't know because the son had a lock on his door and the door was locked from the inside, which means the young man snuck out. We all snuck out. I snuck out when I was his age. You didn't know he snuck out with. And now he gone with these white folks, trailer folks, living over in a trailer, a trailer that they were supposed to be getting put out of anyway. And from the rumors of it, everybody was getting high on mushrooms and all kind of craziness. Mm. Why was this young man with these people? 
Mm. How did he know these people? You don't know who your kids know until it's too late. See, I got to be fair tonight on both sides of the fence. This young man lived with his mama, but he wanted to go live with his daddy. So they moved him over to his daddy's house. And he's at his daddy's house and he got new surroundings, don't know nobody, got to go to a new school. But he got his phone and he on his phone and he talking to somebody. And he snuck out. And now, these same trail of people, white folks, all of a sudden, they packing up, moving out of town. No, not so fast. Because the young man turns up dead in the sugarcane field. The local police from the parish said that he drowned. Well, he should have came up with a better story than that. Because to look at his face, what did he drown in? Rocks? No, this young man looked like someone hit him in the face or dropped something on his face like a cinder block. Or he was hit with something that caused traumatic uh, damage. Killed him. And we don't know the whole story. So I'm not taking no, I'm not acting like I'm the expert. I wasn't there. I'm just telling y'all what's wrong with this picture. We got to start on the first thing. What was the boy doing with the people? They saying that the pops knew them. Look, I don't care who knew what. That ain't my problem. Here's my problem. Here's our problem with this whole situation that nobody wants to talk about. The press is doing the same. Oh, they ain't talking about it around and some concerns. And But there's none of this outrage that they had when the little baby got stole on Christmas. Y'all remember the story of the little girl that disappeared and whatnot, and they thought her family had something to do with it? Oh, they was doing specials, and they was doing telethons, and they was doing marathons, and fun this and fun that. They was doing all of that. But they ain't talking about this one. So let me talk about it for a minute. When the boy turned up dead. The people trying to move. The landlord said they were getting evicted anyway. We know they lied. The truth of the matter is, here come the problem. Mr. Policeman, when the woman came to you and told you that her child was missing, and you said, nah, he probably out playing basketball or something like that. Then, I turn around and tell him my son is missing again. He said, no, we're not going to issue an Amber Alert. But if it was a white child, that shit would have been up before, we could, before the engine got cold. Now, all of a sudden, now the police don't want to talk about it. Hmm. The sheriff don't want to talk about it. Mm. Prosecutors ain't said nothing. Mm. Said they ain't going to prosecute no crime. No crime. These are the same folks that said that there was some foul play involved. Mm. Okay. 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 See, here go the problem, white folks. Y'all got to help me out right now. See, this, is, this is why 